Hi, my name is Nick LaRue from Film Snobbery. How's it going, Nick? It's nice to see you again. Nice to see you again, Dan. How are you? Nice to meet you, Benji. Hi. Well, I knew when we were doing this, I, I really wanted you to be a part of it. So I'm glad that I, it worked out. I super appreciate it. This is right up my alley. Um, and I, this is great, too, because I get to meet Benji finally, the the, the mysterious second half. Oh, um, he's in the shadows. <laughs> I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, what? So I'm going to uh, direct the first question towards Benji, just to get him talking. Um, I'm sure you guys have been doing this all day. Uh, what is the writing process like between the two of you? How do you, how does that, how do you, what is the partnership like? I mean, we've, we've been writing together since, since college. So, you know, it's been uh, a solid 20 or so years of, of working together. So we kind of have uh, a hive mind at this point, like uh, we will, you know, we, we'll look back at scripts and we won't know who wrote which line because it's it's impossible to know. Uh, we, we generally, we like to talk through a story in as much detail as we possibly can, lots of, you know, hours and hours of brainstorming and and thinking things through from multiple angles and when we're not sitting in our office in person talking we are texting all through the night and like we're basically in constant communication uh which everyone loves yeah our, our wives are a huge fan of that <laughs> everybody but, just thinks it's the best but, way to do anything but yeah so by the time by the time we actually begin the process of of putting words to, to paper uh we've talked about it so much that like we kind of know what to do and usually one of us will go off and and write a a first draft of you know at least get some scenes down and then send it to the other and we'll and then we'll rewrite throw things out change the I and mean, we just have we just have complete trust of each other where you know if i cut something that dan wrote he knows i probably cut it for a reason if he cut something that i wrote I know he cut it for a reason and uh, we don't really argue about this stuff. We've got the same taste. Um, That's the main thing that I try to explain to people when they talk about writing partnerships is that you don't always have to be equally as good at every aspect of writing and creating as your partner. In fact, I would actually say it's more useful to have complementary skills in a lot of ways. But what you do need to have is the same taste and the same sort of end goal in mind for what you want any given project to look like and feel like and be like. And in the case of animation, you might start with something on the page that works beautifully. And then the second that you see the storyboard, you go, oh, it read great and it doesn't work at all. And so now you got to kind of pivot and say, OK, let's let's do another round of, of, of writing. And then it goes to layout in case of, you know, 3D animation and you go, oh, you know what? Now I'm seeing things that I thought worked before on the storyboard, but don't work at all. And then again in the animation. So, you know, at the end of that process, it, it's it's sometimes it's years. In the case of this one, it's been, you know, years since we first started working on it. But you really build everything from the ground up over and over and over and over again until what you arrive at is sort of the distillation of of those many months and years of work. And thankfully, because Benji and I have such a close partnership and are such close friends, we are aligned creatively on what we want it to end up like. And in this case, it was a true celebration of all things Lego and all things Star Wars and the sort of alchemical magic of when they come together and become Lego Star Wars. And that was always the goal, a holistic exploration of everything that has ever happened in either of those sort of worlds coming together and a celebration of that for the 25th anniversary of, of that partnership. And that is fantastic. And also congratulations on reaching a milestone like that. I mean, that is a momentous occasion for anyone doing anything together, whether it's a marriage or otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you kind of uh, both actually uh, kind of uh, inadvertently answered my next question, which is how do you settle disputes? Cause I'm assuming it's not, it's not lightsabers at dawn. So I wish. I wish he'd probably win if it were lightsabers at dawn. He's got a lot of reach, so it's kind of not. <laughs> I would flip around like Yoda, maybe. But you know, there, there, there's rarely 
at this point, we rarely have disputes because I think that we're we are so rigorous at the beginning of the process. Every now and then, every but like it's it's we're talking about disputes of like I like this line with this word, I like it with that word. Like it's 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 the smallest stuff that it, I think most of the time that gets settled by like whoever seems to care. Right, more. whoever really like, cares. The okay, most. it seems like you really want it like this. Sure, like I fine um it's i don't think we've ever had a dispute where it's like really like reach an impasse uh that's just never happened for us maybe it's because before we started writing together we were best friends and it's just like we're still best friends and the, the writing is is almost secondary to the friendship that has always existed and i also think one of the things that is really special about our partnership is that I think that we both assume that the other one probably knows what they're doing when we make these kind of changes or make a cut or feel really passionately about something. It, it's it's like we care equally, but we sort of care about different things, I would say, in a in a sort of nitty gritty technical sense. Mm -hmm. I, I think that um, Benji is just, you know, masterful at structure and and editing and how to combine scenes and and I don't have as sort of rigorous a mind when it comes to that stuff. I'm a lot more like, but what are we what are we feeling right now? Like what is the sort of deep philosophy of what is going on? And so if there is something where I'll say, you know what, it's actually really important to me thematically to have this line because of blah blah blah. Most of the time he'll go, okay, Dan whatever yes good good you you do that and if he's like if i'm like for pacing purposes like if we cut this thing here like it'll be a hundred times better and you just need to trust me and i'm like all right great <laughs> i trust you so i think that that it's it's born out of a deep trust in each other that that allows us to to function this way. well and dan that actually that that segues really well into what my next question was going to be which is what are some of the bigger themes that you both wanted to explore with this series um I think there's a lot of themes that really fit beautifully into the concept of Rebuild the Galaxy, but one that has really taken prominence in my mind was this idea that you can be an expert on something, you can really study something, and life has a way of throwing you a curveball, and things happen that you couldn't possibly prepare for, and sometimes when those things happen, you can't fix it. You can't go back. You can't make things like it was before. And one of the things I think is is a little bit surprising in, in the series is Sig really thinks he can put the old galaxy back to the way it was, and he just can't. And I think that that's an important lesson for kids and, and for adults to say, you know, you don't always have control over these sort of events that occur in your life but what you do have control over is your response is how you're going to try to move forward how you're going to try to rebuild your life or how you're going to try to navigate within that or if you're going to become bitter if you're going to become angry if you're going to go into stasis when some of these things occur and i think it's kind of a i don't think it's the the most obvious way for this series to progress because i think that there's an expectation like of course the good guys will put everything the way that it used to be but we felt like that was a cheat a little bit. And so it was very important to us to say, no, there's no going back. But Luke actually says this. Mark Hamill brilliantly says, you know, there's some things about this galaxy that are worse for sure, but there's some things that are better. And maybe those things that are better and the lives that we could have here are worth fighting for. And that to me is the big idea of the whole series. And to have Mark as Luke Skywalker articulate that man it just fills my heart with with a feeling i can't even describe but but it's and, amazing and i would say that you know along those lines uh another theme that was important is just like we were sort of looking at at lego itself and one of the the beautiful things about lego as opposed to pretty much any other uh toy or hobby is like with lego when you break something, it can be rebuilt. Like, like if you have a, a a collector's item toy or a model kit or anything like that, if that got smashed, it's done for. You know, you can try and repair it, but it's never going to be the same. But with Lego, 
you could have, you know, the Dark Falcon right here, and you can you could smash it on the ground, and I would be annoyed, but <laughs> I would pick up the pieces and put it back together. If you have your own Lego creation and it gets smashed, you can rebuild it. It might not be exactly the same as it was when you rebuilt it. You might rebuild it differently. You might make it better in some ways. But just that idea that like nothing is ever truly broken uh, is is something that that really feels unique to Lego, and we wanted that to be reflected in the show. Yeah. No, I absolutely love that. The idea that, you know, consequences matter. Um, I, I think we live in a world of, especially when we talk multiverse kind of things, uh, we we get trapped in that, well, he can always go back to whatever the status quo was, or there's always a reset button somewhere. And to have this new version of the Star Wars universe, even in Lego form, was a really thrilling thing to see because it was it was different yet familiar and it but things still made sense. And you really did um you you did a whole new thing with the, the canon and I really appreciated how uh seamlessly you did that. Um uh it was it was very good. What, what is it difficult or easier? Uh, I'm gonna give this one over to Benji. Is this easier or difficult to work within a, uh, a a big existing IP like this? Never mind two like Lego and Star Wars. Is it is it easier? Is there anything that was off the table to you guys? Like, hey, we're not going to try to touch anything outside of say the nine movie, you know, movies or anything like that. I mean, fortunately for us, we have a lot of experience working with big IP from Pokemon to Ninja Turtles or Adam's Family. So like. We're, we're well versed in those worlds. And I think working on some of those previous projects of ours gave us some, some helpful lessons to take with us into this, which is, you know, for instance, like with, with Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, we, we made some changes to, to, to the, the backstory, to the lore, to, to origin stories and stuff. And as we were writing it, there was definitely a moment of like, are people going to be okay with this? Is our, our fans going to get upset that we're changing things? And what we realized based on, you know, the overwhelmingly positive responses that we got to that movie is as long as you're true to the spirit of, of the thing, people are actually okay with changes happening. Uh, you know, like it's fans are not so strict that like, oh, it needs to be this, it needs to be that. It's more about like, does this feel faithful to the thing I love? And so, you know, that was really helpful for us to bring into this where we knew that we were really wanting to change a lot in this mashed up galaxy, but sort of the 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 tightrope we were walking, the, the fine line we were straddling is we wanted to completely mash up the galaxy and the Star Wars universe and, and change worlds and characters and everything like that, but as you said, we wanted it to still feel like Star Wars and feel true to Star Wars and feel like a Star Wars story. So, you know, we we couldn't mash it up so far that it felt like you were just in a different franchise altogether. Uh, and, and so that was that was the main challenge and the main exercise and, and, and the main test that we put everything through of like, does this still feel like Star Wars? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I... I mission accomplished um mm -hmm. so I, i'll do a, a couple of easy quick fire questions uh uh we'll start with dan uh what was your favorite lego set both as an adult and as a child well as a child my favorite was the pirate ship set uh sort of the iconic one i think it came out in 89 but was sort of iterations of it were available and you know during my i'll call it my prime toys r us years <laughs> where, you know, I, I just love them. Um, I did a report on Sir Francis Drake in fifth grade, and I decided uh, rather than try to build a model or a diorama, I, I was like, what if I built this Lego set and sort of themed it to Sir Francis Drake? And so that's exactly what I did. And it was, I remember feeling a real sense of pride and accomplishment when I finished, that was my first big build. Um, so that one is really meaningful to me. And we recently had the opportunity to go to the the vault, Lego vault in, in Billund, Denmark. And I got to actually see in the archives uh, the ship that meant so much to me. So I, I guess it's still my favorite of the classic ones. And then 
on the Lego Star Wars end of things, um, uh, it's hard to choose, but I, I really, uh, I love, I got Benji for his 40th birthday, the Cloud City set, which is a, like a pretty rare set from the early 2000s that uh, has the the special Boba Fett minifig and is, is uh, it's, a, it's really, it's just terrific. And we actually got to meet the designer of the set in Denmark. It, it just was, it's been a magical experience. So those are probably my two faves. All right, Benji. I mean, uh, now I would say that the, the, the sets for our show have have definitely uh, taken <laughs> take, taken the torch. They've jumped ahead because <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's still surreal to me that I was involved in the creation of not one, not two, but three Lego sets that are on shelves, and it's it's hard to believe. So, but removing the the, the sets that I had a hand in. I, I would say the most fun Lego set that I've ever built is the is the giant UCS Millennium Falcon, uh, which was I mean that I was so I I, I that playing with that a, a few years ago fully transported me back to being a kid again in a way that I didn't know was possible uh, from a Lego set for an adult, but it was it's just amazing. I was I was saying that um, it's too bad my all, all of my Legos are in the other room next to me and not uh -huh. here in my office. It would have been, been a perfect backdrop. I just had no way of making that happen. And I do have the UCS Millennium Falcon. Uh, it is a fantastic build. Um, uh, Dan, what? Because I know we're closing. We got three minutes left. I'm being told. So let's go with uh, Dan. What is your favorite moment of the series? That's a really that's a really challenging question, but I think my favorite moment of the series is when Luke Skywalker, even though he's the beach Luke and he's kind of been messing around on Tatooine, there's a moment that very intentionally recalls sort of the binary sunset sequence where they're down in the fish guts room and Luke says, well, I guess I'm going with you. I guess in the end, Tatooine isn't big enough for Luke to hold Luke Skywalker. And Sig, played by Gaten Matarazzo, beautifully says, it never is. And I think that what that moment means to me is, in a character as iconic as Luke Skywalker, even in this different version of the galaxy, even when things are completely different, even when he's maybe, you know, a, a little bit more of a questionable character, there's an innate spirit that transfers across galaxies that Luke Skywalker is Luke Skywalker. And in the end, Luke Skywalker is a hero. And I just, I find it very moving. And the fact that it's actually Mark Hamill playing Luke Skywalker, saying those lines, I, I still, it hardly seems real. No, it's beautiful. How about, how about yourself, Benji? Um, it's hard. It, it's really hard for me to pick. I, I'm sort of thinking of, of my favorite moments and visuals right now. I think there's, there's a moment in the final battle when the, when the giant window shatters into into a million different Lego glass pieces yeah. that and that wasn't even we didn't even write that happen yeah. that was Chris Buckley our our amazing director uh who had this idea and when we saw it like sketched out it was like oh man and it just got better and better as as it got rendered further and it just like it just is the coolest thing <laughs> <laughs> no i love that it was uh, that was uh, so cinematic and i was like that why wasn't that put in one of the the movie right. movie you know you know that's like, kind of how we felt so we felt like this was we, kind we of our, like how has no one ever thought of this in, in star wars this is that, this is that was your holdo maneuver like like area you know well, all right we basically said hey they were foolish enough to let us ride a star wars so we're gonna go for it if Absolutely. We're going to do everything that we've ever dreamt about doing and, 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 you know, until they tell us to stop and they kind of just never did. So, so here we are. If, if they're going to let you do it, do it. You know, uh, it's the old Ghostbusters. If someone asks you if you're a God, you say yes. Um, <laughs> I want to I want to thank both of you for uh for sitting down and chat with me. I know you have a long day of doing all of these. Um I, and thank you for including me. Uh also um one just congratulations. I mean it's a it's a great uh it's a great it's a great mini series. I really want to see more of it. So I hope thank that 
everyone gets a chance to totally. enjoy it the way I did. The only person that asked us about our writing process all day. So you you win the you win the championship belt for that. That's all I that's all I wanted. That's all I want. Just make sure you get a few extra notches on that belt. I'm a big notches. We're getting we'll get as many as you need, but you are the only one to ask us. So we definitely appreciate that.